Well, as you can see, I have a different motherboard in my main computer. And I have an explanation for that. Let's turn our attention to Exhibit A. The 970A UD3 board that used to be in my main computer that I put in there uh, last summer. I've explained in the previous video about how this motherboard has quirks with uh, 2D video not working on a soft restart or when you, even when you just hit the reset button. And that quirk bothered me when I first got it. I thought it was a video card problem. So, you know the whole story. I got an AMD card and it didn't do it once, but then it did it every time after that uh, video problem. So, I've come to the conclusion that it's this motherboard that just has quirks. It makes reinstalling Windows a very, very, very annoying chore. So, what I've decided to do is uh, try to RMA this board. It's currently being, it's currently awaiting approval right now. Uh, I sent it in that way. If they don't approve it, then whatever. I'll just sell the board as is and uh, try to recoup some of the cost of it. It was about a $100 board, so, you know, it wasn't that expensive. But if I could get, you know, 60 70 maybe even 50 bucks, if I have no choice for it, I'd be pretty happy. So what I put back in my main computer is something that you guys might find all familiar. The Z68 PDS3 motherboard. And this is a an Intel Socket 1155 Sandy Bridge motherboard. Now I know everyone that saw me go AMD is going, why are you going back to Intel when you switched? Well, I'll tell you what. That FX6300 has been a fantastic CPU. But, I can't afford to dish out the money for a new motherboard. I could get a 990 FXA board and that would solve all my problems with this one. But, I, I honestly just can't afford to get a new motherboard. And uh, to be honest, I really don't want to. I don't want to get a new motherboard and risk instability all over again because y you never know what can happen. I decided that I want to use a system I already have that has proven itself very stable. And this Z68 motherboard has definitely proven itself very stable. So that's what I'll be using for the foreseeable future. I've decided to stick with uh, Sandy Bridge. Uh, for the long haul. This motherboard can support Ivy Bridge CPUs. In fact, you guys, you guys have seen it. It does support Ivy Bridge CPUs. But because the chipset is Z68, it doesn't really take full advantage of, uh, of Ivy Bridge CPUs. So the, per so the performance difference is negligible. And it, it is in the first place anyway, because the difference in CPU performance between, you know, second, third, and fourth generation uh, Core i-series processors really is non-existent. The place where you get the only real difference between all those generations is the chipsets and how much more power efficient and how much better the chipsets are rather than performance. So I decided to stick with Sandy Bridge for the long haul since that's what this uh, motherboard was really designed for. So there you have it. That's what I put back in this machine uh, for stability's sake. So. That's my story. I've gone back to this build because it's a proven, stable, and reliable motherboard. And that's really what I need out of my main computer is stability and reliability more than anything else. So, I'll give you a brief overview of the system. We have the 750 watt PC power and cooling power supply still in there. We have the aftermarket Dynatron cooler on the Core i3-2105. Now, that's another thing I know people are going to say something about. You have a Core i3. Well, as much as people hate on the Core i3, it's really not a bad chip at all. It performs very, very well. It's not a seller on guys. Stop falling for that crap. It actually does perform well. It's just not quite in the same league as a Core i5 or a Core i7, simply because it just doesn't have, a, it doesn't have four cores on it like those two do. And I plan to upgrade this Core i3-2105 to probably a 2500K or a 2600K uh, in the future. I don't know how soon that will be. That will depend on money. Uh, but, you know, it will happen in the future. But for now, I can survive just fine on the i3. I mean, if I had no choice, I could survive on the i3 completely fine. But I'd like to upgrade it so that uh, exporting video is faster because true quad cores are good at that. They're good for video rendering. 
Below that, here we have the Gigabyte GTX 750 Ti, so I can still use that graphics card. And to make up for the loss of ports by using this motherboard, the 990 or the 990, the 970 board had a lot of really good uh, I/O and port selection on the back of it, so I have to compensate for that with some PCI cards here. I have a Belkin one with four USB ports on the back that are all taken up by low power devices, so I don't really stress it too much. And above that I have a Firewire 400 card that I use for mini DV and digital light cameras. It's about the only use I have for Firewire anymore. I don't use it for hard drives or anything like that these days. It's pretty much all for cameras. I still have the five hard drives in this machine. I really need to get bigger hard drives. This is kind of excessive I think. Uh, I'll get around to that eventually. Eventually being the, the right word. I have the 16 gig RAM kit in there of Corsair Vengeance, so that's 16 gigs of DDR3. Still have the Blu-ray drive, and I've added a card reader to this system so that I can uh, deal with compact, mainly so I can deal with compact flash cards for my vintage PCs that I'll be converting to CF card. So that's pretty nice. And that's what my system is going to be. It's, I mean, you guys have seen this build before, so it's nothing new. Uh, I'll probably do another video when I upgrade the CPU, uh, j you know, just for uh, just for shits and giggles, you know, whatever. But for now, this should do me just fine, and hopefully that RMA with the 970 board here uh, works out. Uh, maybe they'll say there's nothing wrong with it. I don't know, but either way, I'll figure it out. One thing I'd like to mention is uh, I've been discussing this issue with several people and they've told me that 970 boards in general seem to have quirks one way or another no matter who you buy them from. You know, uh, some people were quick to blame Gigabyte and it turns out that really the nine, anything surrounding the 970 chipset no matter who makes it seems to have some oddities one way or another. Although I've heard this I've heard uh, I've heard from people that they have no issues at all with their 970 boards, so I guess it's just luck of the draw. And I got unlucky, I suppose. And I used to think that Gigabyte AMD boards uh, were not a good way to go after I had one with an Enforce chipset on it, and turns out the Enforce chipset was just terrible. So I have an unstable AMD board here. I have a very rock solid stable Intel board here from Gigabyte. But, at the same time, I have an APU board here that is also one of the most stable boards I have ever had. This is seriously one of the best boards I've ever had. The only issue I've ever had with this is video card compatibility uh, with the chipset. And that is purely driver, that is not hardware. So, you can blame Gigabyte for the bad drivers, but if you just use the onboard video on, on an APU setup like this, it seems to work absolutely beautifully. But anyway, I'm getting sidetracked here. So these two boards we want to focus on. I've gone back to my Z68 build, and since that's proven the most stable out of anything modern that I've used, other than the uh, APU setup, I think I'm going to stick to this for quite a long time. Probably, probably until DDR4 becomes a uh, a thing. That's that's my goal uh, for my main computer is to keep it going as is uh, until, at least with this this type of board until uh, DDR4 is, is, uh, cheap, is, is affordable and readily available on uh, newer motherboards. So there you have it folks. I've gone back to Intel. I'm going to stay with Sandy Bridge uh, because the TIM under the chip is not terrible. Despite me not liking that type of technology, I still don't like the fact that Intel puts thermal paste under the lid of the CPU. It, it, it's livable. I mean, what choice do I have? I want a stable build, so this is what I'm going to do. So, there you have it. The Sandy Bridge chip is the Sandy Bridge platform has proven itself very reliable. That's what I'll be sticking with for the long haul. So, there you have it. I've reinstalled Windows on this particular machine, and uh, it's proven itself quite a stable, zippy, and reliable machine. Should give me many more years of service. I've had this board since 2011 and hopefully it will uh, give me many, many more years of good service. So that concludes this video. I just thought I'd uh, mention that I uh, 
swapped motherboards and went back to an older build that I had, but will be upgrading it again. So I've kind of reversed myself from when I switched to AMD. And I just want to clarify, that's not because the CPU sucks, that's because uh, motherboards. Yeah, motherboards. <laughs> Anyhow, you know, I'm not going to drone on about it. You guys get the picture. Went back to a stable solution, and that's where I'm staying for the long haul. So there you have it, folks. Hope you, enjo hope you enjoyed me uh, rambling on about my computer again. <laughs> have a good one, everybody. Ciao. Oh, by the way, I overclocked my computer to 9 o'clock p.m.